Hi folks, I am Pastor Dawn from the South Cayuga Community Church and it is a pleasure to warmly welcome you to worship with us here on YouTube. We look forward to uh, worshiping with you in person on Raynham Road someday soon, we hope, but for now uh, we're so happy that you have chosen to join us here on YouTube. If you aren't part of our mailing list or regularly receiving uh, updates on Facebook, please check us out there. Uh, give us a like and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can send us a message through there if you would like to be added to the email address. Let's center ourselves for worship. that we worship today on land that was walked for thousands of years by indigenous people, the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. We seek to steward this land once known as Turtle Island and to live in right relationship with all peoples, indigenous, settler and newcomer, as well as all of creation's beings. Let us pray. Holy God, this Advent time of anticipation and excitement has been overshadowed this year. The restrictions confining us, the conflicting and confusing news reports, the tragic losses we've experienced weigh heavy on our hearts. We know, Holy God, that you are with us in our grief and for that we give you thanks. We know that it is right and good, Holy God, to praise you. From our kitchen tables and living room couches, we praise you anyway. With paper copies of the service and YouTube videos, we praise you anyway. With tired and weary hearts, we praise you anyway. Holy God, fill us with warmth and wonder this day as we worship you, the one whose love envelops us and never ends, the one who gifted us the Son, Jesus Christ, love incarnate. In love and thanksgiving, we praise you anyway. Amen. Our opening hymn is found in Voices United, number 333, Love divine, all loves excelling. Thank you. 
George Herbert wrote, Love bade me welcome, but my soul drew back. It's hard to take in the nominee of God's love made flesh in Jesus Christ. We look at the candles and enjoy the special music of the season. It's easier to listen to the radio or buy the red cup at the coffee shop than to dwell on the truth. The psalmist knew it, knew it long before Jesus, for the with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. God became one of us out of love for all of us. Then and now and forever, when we light candle, the candle of love, we stop in awe of God's unending love. Whatever we encounter along the road of life, God's steadfast love surrounds us. of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of J Judah and his brothers, Judah the father of Perez and Zezra, whose mother was Tamar, Perez the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Amin Adab, Amin Adab, the father of Na Nashon. Nashon, the father of Sam Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz. The mother was Rehab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse. And Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Solomon, the father of Rehabworm, Rehabworm, the father of Abijah, Abijah, the father of Esau, Esau, the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram, Jehoram, the father of Uzziah, Uzziah, the father of Jotham, Jotham, the father of Ahaz, Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Ammon, Ammon, the father of Joseph, and the father of Josiah, and Josiah, the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the exile to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shetil, Jetil, the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, Babel, the father of Abahud, Abahud, the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor, Azor, the father of Zadok, Zadok, the father of Achim, Achim, the father of Elihud. Elihud, the father of Elizar. Elizar, the father of Mahan. Mahan, the father of Jacob. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. And Mary was the mother of Jesus, who was called the Messiah. 
Thus there were 14 generations in all, from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile of Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. The second scripture reading is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy to all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign unto you. You will find the babe, baby wrapped in cloths and living in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels left, had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Our next hymn is found in Voices United, number 75, While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks. McLaren and we make the road by walking rites of the genealogical list we just heard. Matthew's version, which starts in the distant past and moves to the present, holds lots of treasures. Most surprising is his inclusion of five women. 
In the ancient world, people were unaware of the existence of the human egg and assumed that a man provided the only seed of a new life. So ancestor lists naturally focused on men. It's surprising enough for Matthew to include women at all, but the women he selects are quite astonishing. First, there is Tamar. She had once posed as a prostitute in a web of sexual and family intrigue. Then there is Rahab, a Gentile of Jericho who actually was a prostitute. Then there is Ruth, another Gentile who entered into a sexual liaison with a wealthy Jew named Boaz. Then there is Bathsheba, who was married to a foreigner, Uriah the, Hitt the Hittite, with whom King David committed adultery. And finally, there is Mary, who claims to be pregnant without the help of Joseph. These are not the kind of women whose names were typically included in ancestor lists of the past. But that, of course, must be Matthew's point. Jesus isn't entering into a pristine story of ideal people. He is part of the story of Gentiles as well as Jews, broken and messy families as well as noble ones, normal folks as well as kings and priests and heroes. We might say that Jesus isn't entering humanity from the top with a kind of trickle-down grace, but rather from the bottom with grace that rises from the grassroots up. Jesus' family tree got me thinking about my own family and my own lineage. No one on either side of my family seems particularly passionate about ancestry or history, so I really don't know far back beyond my grandparents who were all born in Canada and great-grandparents who were born in England and Scotland and Ireland. I wonder truly who the characters were from my own history? Were there prostitutes? Were there uh, women who went against the grain? Maybe pirates or trailblazers? I wonder. And then I think about my extended family now. And I have a hippie aunt who loves essential oils and always has potions and lotions and uh, eats really strange things. I have a quirky uncle who uh, wears a ring on every one of his fingers. And I also have one uncle who is absolutely hilarious and comparable to Steve Smith from The Red Green Show. But who is the shady or colorful character from my family? The more I wondered about that, the more I began thinking that it might actually be me. I am the one who set off on an adventure at 19, albeit to university, but I did purposely choose one 10 hours away. Over the next 20 years after I first set off, I uh, never came back home again. I got married and divorced and had three major career changes, went back to school again and became a minister. A minister, a job which used to bring with it prestige and certain airs. But now that the church is no longer the center of the community and less people actually come to church um, than, than don't come to church, Ministry is kind of an off-the-wall profession these days. I go against the grain, certainly against many of the common childhood understandings, um, many of the common understandings from my childhood, and I definitely have more tattoos than anyone else in my family. So I'm beginning to think I might be the shady, colorful character in my family. And I'm okay with that. I hope that my son Brady's grandchildren and great-grandchildren tell stories of their wild and holy, I totally have that tattooed right here, their wild and holy granny who stood with the marginalized and fought against injustice, who argued for equality and was appalled by racism.
Normal is boring. Jesus didn't have a normal birth and he certainly didn't come from a normal family. His family tree is filled with interesting characters who made it into the history books for their shocking behavior and the differences that they made. Who are the shady and colorful characters in your family? Is it you? Do you own that? Do you love that? Or has it always made you feel less than? Not only are there characters included in Jesus' lineage, the first people who were included in the celebration of Jesus' birth, the people that the angels announced his birth to, were characters. They were the shady guys out in the fields, the nomads, the shepherds who were traipsing around the countryside with livestock. They're the down-to-earth people who hear the celestial announcement from angelic messengers. Shepherds were the marginal people in society, a lot like the characters we heard about before, a lot like Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, Bathsheba, and Mary. They weren't normal family men because they lived outside most of the time, guarding sheep from wolves and thieves and guiding sheep to suitable pasture. A younger son for whom there was no hope of inheriting the family farm might become a shepherd, as would a man who for some reason was not suitable for marriage. It was among poor men like these that Jesus' birth was first celebrated. Jesus wasn't born in a palace surrounded by royalty and prestige. He wasn't born in a hospital with doctors and nurses and flowers and balloons. His humble start was simple with the bare necessities. This year, our Christmases are also like to be humble, also likely to be humble, simple, and a little bare. Memories of Christmases past, of being surrounded by all the crazy, shady characters of our families, of worshiping in packed sanctuaries with everyone's voice raising the roof of traveling the roads, stopping in here and there for drinks and goodies with great friends, our remembrances will have to reminisce about as we safely and humbly celebrate the birth of Jesus, our brother, our shady family member, in a different way this year. Though in-person worship, family gatherings, Christmas parties and parades have been canceled, Christmas itself is not canceled. Jesus' birth is not canceled. Relationships are not canceled. Conversations are not canceled. Music is not canceled. Imagination is not canceled. Kindness is not canceled. Hope is not canceled. Love is not canceled. Jesus Christ, love incarnate was born. We were given the ultimate gift, a gift that cannot ever be canceled. May our hearts rejoice. Amen. Let us pray. God of hope and peace, you patiently wait for us to tap into your hope and peace as we busily rush around preparing for Christmas festivities. You patiently wait for us to pause, reminding us in the moments of silence, in the crash of the waves, in the song of the Cardinal, that the true preparations for Christmas are within. They're not shopping and decorating and cleaning and baking and wrapping. Preparing to celebrate the arrival of your son Jesus requires less doing and more hope and peace and patience. The voices of the great prophets remind us of our lineage, of your promises to us, of what is to come. God of joy and love, slow us down. Not because we're weighted down with worry and weariness, but help us remember that it is in loving relationship that you gave your son to us, and it is in loving relationship that your word is carried into the hearts of the people. No tinsel, ribbons, tape, or cards can convey the eternal message adequately. You have given us the light to shine in our path and cut through our darkness. We acknowledge the darkness, holy God, the violence and terror, 
the devastation, both natural and man-made, the oppression and unjust ways of this world. We pray for those who are suffering, who are awaiting reprieve and change. We ask, creator of all, giver of light, that you would shine in the hearts of the people today who are in need of your healing, reconciling, comforting presence and love. Please, God, give strength to all who face difficult situations and let your compassionate light shine on them, guiding their decisions and their steps. May your light of hope and love continually pour out on us that we might reflect it to everyone we encounter wherever we go. These prayers and hopes we offer to you in gratitude for your love and presence. Amen. Hi folks, so I'm coming to you on location this time. I am uh, with Donna Mulder and we are at the Salvation Army and here is all of our donations from all of you and also uh, check for $2,600, 2625 So we did it. So Cayuga Community Church, we surpassed our goal and uh thank you so much for being a blessing this christmas season let's pray gracious and loving god we are blessed with mercy upon mercy our gratitude overflows all things come from you creating god and with joy we offer our gifts in return you lavish us with never-ending love. May our offerings to our church and to our community and around the world be blessed. May our hearts be abundant with joy as we ask your blessing upon the Salvation Army Food Bank and the people it supports, as well as its volunteers and employees. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that we are able to give to others in the way of food and supplies and money. We ask that these gifts be used to bring joy to our community and joy to the world. We lift our hearts in hope and love for a better world and for the coming of your kingdom on earth. Amen. Amen and amen. Our closing hymn is found in Voices United number 43, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Thank you. 
not selfishness. Live in peace, not frustration. Live in joy, not doubt. Live in action, not fear. Our Advent journey is almost complete. May we take God's treasures, Advent's hope, peace, joy, and love with us to hold in our hearts and to offer to one another and to the world love insanely, love ridiculously, love without expectations, just as God loves you. Amen. <laughs>